Hello again. Uh, my name's Keith, same as it has been all the time. Um, just another little update on the Chester uh, DB10 uh, lathe that I bought uh, in the last uh, video. Uh, I described the state the lathe was in and the fact that the DRO wasn't working. Uh, it was lighting up but no uh, uh, no indication of uh, the speed of the chuck on it. It just said zero all the time. So uh, as you do uh, I had a search on the internet on the usual uh, suspect and uh, came up with this which seemed to fit the bill it's a sensor with a little magnet that it uh, uses to trip the uh, I'm not sure if it's an NPN or MP whatever sensor in here to give a signal and with that they're only eight pounds something very cheap you get the display now being me I didn't buy one I bought two I bought one in red and one with a blue display Anyway, uh, that's the display. Uh, it comes with all the wire and everything to connect it up. It's a pretty simple job to connect up. Um, me uh, being a master of all trades but master of none. It took me a minute before I got it all working but I did get it working. And I will show this working now on a on a rig to show you how it works. Uh, when I first got it on the back, it says um, supply DC volts eight to twenty four at thirty milliamps. So I tested the output to the original display and found it was only 5 volts and I did jury rig it and I did try it on 5 volts and although I got a little bit of a result it wasn't right so I put it to one side for a minute or two and the other day I went on the internet again and found uh, I, don't know, I suppose it is an inverter but it ups, upscales the voltage from 5 volts to 12 volts. And I thought, well, that's going to be ideal for me. Um, display, we'll have another look at it. So this morning, just to check things and check I'd got a working display, uh, I set mine up with a power pack set at 5 volts. Uh, set the sensor up and put the magnet on my drill chuck and lo and behold actually at 5 volts I was getting a perfectly good reading and the problem all the time had been the polarity of the magnet now I don't read instructions I don't do reading never have done reading uh, whether it says anything about it in the instructions I couldn't tell you uh, but by rotating it and trying it again I got a good reading when it was the other way around I got a very feeble reading I passed the sensor across the magnet and it would blink but then it wouldn't blink again and it, I thought it must be the voltage uh, but it wasn't the voltage when I flipped the magnet I got a perfect reading every time I passed it in front of the sensor so 
just be aware of that the polarity of the magnet uh, so once we got that right I have jury rigged it in the machine and it works fine I'll just show you it working now when I uh, reposition my camera right uh, as you can see the new uh, readout fits exactly in the original cutout there's nothing to do there just push it in as the original was pushed in uh, I notice on the readout I suppose it must be the stroboscopic effect and something I don't know anything about and uh, the numbers don't hold still on the video but from where I'm standing it reads 130132 132 revolutions a minute and uh, turn it up now it says settle down 354 so it works a treat and I've checked it with one of these meters I checked it with this and that says 354 now check it with this and that says 354.7 so that's close enough for me uh, the only thing I don't know is if the original when you set a speed if it was like a governor and as load came on it would increase the power of the lathe because the, both the sensor and the readout were connected to a board in the back where obviously this is just connected to a power supply I don't know if that was the case but uh, for anybody else with a Chinese lathe or any of the others that come from uh, Asia that have this system and if it goes down I believe the motherboards at the back are quite expensive but for £8.50 you can get your readout going I don't want to but I will I'll take the cover off just to show how I've adapted the sensor to this machine so when I've taken the cover off I'll give you another look I don't want to do it because it's a bastard of a job there's six bloody screws so I'll do it now and I'll come back and show you as you can see uh, this is the bracket that was original to the machine and it just had a right hand bend in the corner and came out across here. What I've done is put a Z bend in it so it clears this part of the casting and goes further in towards the spindle and I've just cable tied the sensor to that bracket. There's the sensor. This is the encoder wheel. It's original to the machine. It is metal and uh, I don't know if you can just see there I've just adulated the magnet to the encoder wheel uh, spot of five minute epoxy the great advantage is because that's metal and obviously that's a magnet it does pull itself on and holds itself while the uh, adulite cures so uh, you haven't got to clamp it or do anything, it's a very very easy fix it's that easy I could do it uh, the wiring at the minute is a bit of a jury rig, I've just got the input wires to the uh, I'll zoom out of it right the input wires to the display are just 
at the minute temporarily pushed into the uh, original socket that feeds the 5 amps. I left it like that for the time being because I've got this uh, voltage step up coming. I want to put that in, give me a brighter display uh, and then I'll tidy up the wiring. But that's what I've done and it seems to be successful. As I said before there must be a reason why it's got this separate encoder panel in the back. It's not the power panel, it's a separate panel and I've just got the feeling that it regulates the speed so if you set a speed of 200 rpm and the load you put on it it starts to drop I've got a feeling this board compensates for it because I can't see any other reason for it being there but I could be talking through my fundamental orifice as I often do so I don't really know maybe somebody does know right I'll put it back together and then I'll show you the, the rig for testing the display oh and of course the other reason I've done it this way is because um, the shed is very small it's only 8 by 12 uh, and I'm a bit of a cripple there's no way I can turn the lathe round to get at the back now it's in position to be able to sort out the digital panel in the back I can't get to it uh, I'm not going to get a engine hoisting again just to move it to do that so I've done it this way so everything is accessible from the front and now I've got a working display again Well, working display again. I never had a working display before, but I've got a working display. Right. The test equipment. Right, we'll just start on connecting this uh, LED display up. Uh, there are online plenty of diagrams for this particular model. If you buy it from eBay, and uh, they haven't got a diagram from where you bought it search for it again find another supplier and they will have uh, a diagram uh, basically uh, on the back we've got uh, I don't know if this is readable or not We've got five connections. Uh, the first one is uh, positive 5 volts. Sorry, the positive input. Will it be 5 volts, which I'm using in a minute? Uh, 8 to 24 is the recommended. Uh, 2 is the ground. 3 is the signal from the sensor. 4 is not used and 5 is a positive supply to the sensor. So uh, with that I'll just touch these wires together and first of all uh, I just want a little bit more wire, wire to play with what comes with it. So I'll just I'll just cut the insulation my knife is a Swan Warden surgical knife uh, because at one time I, I could have become a brain surgeon but I've got the knife ready, so if anybody needs uh, any surgery of any description, just give me a drop me a line because uh, I've got the knife. So we just score that round, give it a pull. Uh, we need to do the signal wire.
and these are knives are amazing at cutting yourself open absolutely brilliant at that I don't have to do that number four but we'll do this positive out to the sensor Right, now, being old fashioned like I am, uh, my wife frequently accuses me of being born a lot earlier than what I am, because I like the Andrews sisters. Right, this is the old uh, Fluxite soldering paste. I've used this since I was a kid. Not this particular tin, but I have got a tin here that is very, very, very old. I think it was me dad's. Anyway, I bought myself a nice new one. What I always do is just flux up what I want to solder and tin them first. Uh, you've got to tin it. And uh, I always did me uh, soldering iron in the flux there's a reel of solder just over here with a piece sticking out and I'm just tinning the end of the soldering iron so we've got some solder on it nice blob there and now we can just run through these wires and tin them One. Two, three, four, all ten. Right. I use one of these uh, soldering stations with a heat gun and an iron. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce the name. A O Y U E. Uh, is the name of it and uh, marvellous I've had a few of them I've got a couple in the van as well because I do a lot of EEPROM work in the van and uh, when you switch the soldering iron on from cold by the time you pick it up or you can dip it in the flux and it's ready to go amazing and uh, the, there's the magnet stuck to my knife already I've got a couple of pieces of uh, shrink tube in to put on the joints when I've finished um, and the wires from the sensor there's three black brown and blue coming directly from the sensor and I'm screwing them together and I'm going to tin them as well and then cut them off to length. So I'll just put a bit of hooks on my knife. Hooks up the wires. But it is essential that you do tin everything. Uh, of course I'm only saying that for the benefit of people but don't do any soldering. Right, again I think we've got enough solder on the iron. Now we just touch the three wires. There we go. Let's uh, tin that one. We've tinned that one. And we've tinned that one. Black one. Lovely. Right. Put the soldering away for a second. I've got a pair of snips here. This has actually got a, these have actually got a wire stripper on the bottom end of them as well. Which is very useful. Line the three up and snippy. There we go. Those are all ready to go. 
So we need to attach them to them. And this is the thing I always forget, is to put... I've bent the one we're not going to solder to, I've bent it back out of the way so we let the dog see the rabbit. So uh, I'll pop me a bit of insulation on, shrink wrap. Not shrink wrap, is it? Shrink tubing. On the positive wire to the sensor and the signal wire. Right, now according to the diagram, your black wire is your positive, and it's marked as test, but positive wire to go to there. Uh, the blue is a signal, and the brown is the live or positive in. So what I'm going to do, hopefully, just line these up so we can see them. Again, just through habit, I will dip these in the flux again. I suppose when you've done something for 60 bloody years, uh, you tend to keep doing it because it works. Right. Just flux the, clean the end of the soldering iron in the flux and I've just added a bit more solder to it. So the black wire has got to go over here. If I didn't have so much rubbish on me desk I'd be able to get at my soldering iron. Excuse me, just had my dinner. Oh dear, come on. Come on. Right, probably got enough now. And uh, because my eyesight isn't as brilliant as it should be, I'm going to use my magnifying glass. Right, see what I'm doing. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I can see what I'm doing. The black wire is going to go here. Like that. Blue wire is going to go here. You what I was talking about. You can get some of these um, uh, little helpers that you can put wires and things in to hold them together while you solder them. Yeah, that's a good idea, but can't be asked getting mine out. There we are, and the brown. I'm just going to wrap on the positive lead there. I'll just put a blob of the old I think I need a bit of solder on me gun. I don't know if I can do it without strangling me so up and because I've screwed those two together I can just go and go and there we are we're soldered up now for the shrink wrap I used to be a smoker on and off give it up several times for a lot of you know like 17 years and then start again and then do six and then so on and so on but I haven't smoked now for quite a few years but some of the paraphernalia comes in handy 
and this thing is the dog's nudges uh, for this sort of work I'm just going to shrink this tubing onto these two wires to tidy it up and obviously make sure that they don't short out put it over the joint it would be better there you go circuit now. There's our ground, there's our positive. Right, turn that over. Now, will the power supply reach? He says. Just out of shot, I've got the power supply. I've got two actually, but this one I bought. Uh, do you want to see it? Bob about where are we? I can't, I can't find it. Where is it? Uh, there, that little one I bought um, to try and do some anodizing uh, on uh, titanium because you can uh, anodize. Um, titanium to different colours by using a range of voltages. Right, we're back in shot. So I shall connect up this. This is all this um, power supply is already uh, uh, set to five volts, exactly five volts. So we're not going to blow anybody up. That's our earth and our live. Uh, I'll switch on. Can we see the thing? Um, the thing about electronics is. Ooh, can you see that? I doubt if you can, can you? It's not very bright. But it's on. The thing about electronics is when you get things wrong, it's very difficult, I find, to get the smoke to go back in. Because after the smokes come out, they never work again. Right, I've got the sensor in my hand. I'm gonna... There we go. How can you do it? You see that, see that, see that, right. You see the end of the sensor? You see that's got a little red light on it. I'll put the magnet in front of it. It just flashes, can you see? Well, that's just simulating RPM. And the RPM has gone up on the blue screen. So now well, it's just fluctuating, but it is working. But this is what got me the first time. I turn that over and touch the thing. There's nothing happening. Very intermittent. Turn it back over so it's the other way round. And bing, bang, bosh, it works every time. So there we go. According to this, I'm doing 217 RPM. I don't feel like I'm doing 217 RPM, but apparently I am. Anyway, that's it. That's tested it. It's working. We know how it goes together. So all we've got to do now, because this one, I'm going to mount on my uh, mini mill. Because I haven't got a DRO on that to tell me what speed I'm doing. I'm always guessing. And... Uh, 
I never guess right. So I'd like to know what I'm doing, and uh, I've found a, I have to find a suitable little box to mount it on. So I'll just show you my mini mill and what I've already got on it. So I'll switch that off. Yeah, five volts. It's doing a not a uh, point zero one ampage drawing according to that. Right. Uh, I'll just switch off for a second and reposition the banjo. Right. In the process of converting my uh, mini mill to CNC uh, I've done several different uh, don't know if you call them upgrades or whatever uh, changes to it uh, one of the changes I did was I made my own z-axis mount opposed to the one I got from the States uh, the one from the States mounted on the side of the column and when you were drilling and it was pecking away you could see the head nodding from side to side as it was pulled up one side and pushed down. So I put a central, made a central mount and put a ball screw straight through the middle so it pulls centrally. So that's got rid of a lot of the nodding inaccuracies. Anyway, my control box is a bit full now, I can't put a DRO in it. There's no room to put it. Uh, I changed the start stop switch to this push button one from the one that came on it for some reason. Uh, this is the original on off switch and this is the original speed control. I have since which uh, is fitted there we are. speed control on off but I've fitted this one now which is a reversing switch so with a piece of uh, tooling I made I can actually manually uh, tap holes, like uh, the series of holes in the, uh, a series of holes in this little uh, fixture. All the holes in that were tapped using the forward and reverse. On, uh, on the mill. Uh, I use the CNC part, I use the program uh, for it to go to the position of the hole and then it starts to peck and then I stop the control and use my uh, manual uh, tapping tool I made. Excuse me which is that which uh, fits in a uh, collet and uh, uh, when the machine has stopped over the hole you just uh, introduce the tap into the hole and at slow speed and all those holes on that other thing a blind hole I think you just uh, power it in stop switch it into reverse power it out move on to the next position very very handy saves a lot of time anyway this is going to be the next little job just to fit the DRO to this so I've got to find somewhere to put the sensor
possibly it might go on the spindle there at the bottom and I put the sensor around the back and then I've got to make a little box to mount the DRO in and we're getting short of space so uh, we'll have to think about that anyway that's all for now thanks for watching uh, click the like button click subscribe click don't like click send a message sod off whatever you like to do thanks for watching bye for now